Well, if you've seen my Doom video, you knew this one was going to come. Back in 1996, Duke Nukem 3D came out, and it changed the way well, I played games again. Um, it's one of the ones where you never tell your parents exactly what is in the game. As far as they're concerned, it's just another shooter. Little behold, it's not at all. Duke was with the first character I can remember who had a loaded gun in one hand and a babe in the other and a one line for every situation. He went as far as steal as many one-liners, most notably from Evil Dead. And various other movies. But the whole backstory of Duke Nukem is aliens came down to invade Earth and they took all the babes. And Duke isn't up for that at all. Now, the whole gameplay in Duke Nukem 3D is just like your standard shooter, like Doom. Except it was the first one I played where you can practically look up and down. Back in Doom, as revolutionary it was at the time, the only thing you couldn't do is look up or down. So if you seen like a monster high up, the gun just automatically shooting, uh, started shooting high up. Duke, you had to look up or down, like this you see. Also, poked fun at things, you had a full interactive environment back in a game like this, which is really fun. So really, this is the only level um, I could show in Duke Nukem. Um, like I said, it's all around babes, beer, and you can think of. Um, you can think with Duke Nukem, he's got it, if you know what I mean. Um, he is one of those characters that's just brilliant to see in the gaming world. And it's still one of the best shooters. Now this is the Duke Nukem 3D on the Xbox 360. I originally got it on the PlayStation 1 and it just it run really good on it. I always hear the PC one at the time was better, plus also you had all the expansion packs as well. I never, I never played them at all, unfortunately, but I always hear they're still some of the best games you play um, at the time. Obviously Duke had a poke at fun um, at his other competitors like Doom and Quake at the time. One of the levels you burst into a room and you see a space marine where he hits out with, that's one doomed space marine. And obviously in one of the other levels, a building comes down after an earthquake. And obviously he says, I'm afraid of no quake. So Duke really was just poking fun at other games. You know some of it's bad, but you just have to accept this is just a fun game to play. Now this is Duke Nukem Manhattan, and this is one of the ones that came out after. It goes back to his roots of where Duke first came out in gaming, where it was a side-scrolling platform. But back in 1997, there was a game called Duke Nukem Forever. It was announced, and it never seen the light of day. Nearly over a decade waiting for a game with this character was bad. It became the laughing stock of the game world. New gaming heroes entered my life, but the king was never really there. Okay, you had Duke Nukem Time to Kill and Duke Nukem Land of the Babes. But it was never the same compared to Duke Nukem 3D. But on the 10th of June 2011, the king was back, baby. Finally, Duke Nukem Forever seen the light of day. After 12 years of waiting, I finally got my hands on the game. And boy oh boy, what can I say? It's a game that's still stuck in the 90s. Now, a lot of people slag this game off. When you think of games today, everybody's looking at like the best of things. Me on the other hand, I couldn't wait for this game to come out. I was dying for this game to come out. And when I got it, I wasn't really disappointed. Now, if you're a fan of Duke Nukem, you're going to love this game. As you can see, the environment's fully interactive. There you go, a bit of self-promoting there. But you can literally get, they do anything like play pool here, get food, and also have a can of juice or something like that, or even a can of beer. Um, it really, really was interactive. Also, 
like I said to you, this is how you put up your health. You've got to find stuff you can use your ego with. That's your health bar. Um, I'll talk a wee bit more later on about that because there's a couple of things obviously I don't like um, in the game. And also, if you remember this back in the first game, the Duke Nukem Balls of Steel pinball machine. I've got balls of fail. Yep, you can fully play that game as well. Also, John St. John re reprises like his role as Duke Nukem. Drink all my beer. And if you're Duke Nukem and you drink beer in real life, you're tough as that. There's also other wee mini games like this. You can drive Duke Nukem's mighty foot monster truck at miniature version to get a couple of wee things. Now, the bad side of things, the loading in this game is horrendous. Now, I'm not out to slag Duke Nukem forever, but this is unacceptable. Two minutes, near enough for a loading time for a game. Power on. Now it's time to kick some ass. That's just one little bad point. But the gameplay actually is really good. It plays like a game that is stuck in the 90s, like I said. But that isn't a bad thing. I actually enjoyed that for a change. You do get to zoom the gun down, but think of it like Fallout 3 where you just go to the edge of the barrel. It's not like proper Call of Duty, stuff like that. And the way this game goes, obviously it's set 12 years after Duke Nukem 3D. The aliens are back and they've took Duke's women. You alien motherfuckers are gonna pay for this. So obviously he goes on a mission to save all Earth's women and take out the alien scum one last time. Now, the way the gameplay goes, it just plays like your normal shooter. Um, with the health bar and the guns, the one thing I didn't like, I really did wish they stuck the game. If it is going to feel like a 90s game, just keep it in the 90s. Let Duke carry all sorts of guns and find health packs. Instead, it's regenerating the ego bar. Um, you can only carry two weapons at a time, which it pokes fun, like I said, at the competition. I mean, he always gets a dig in about a certain game, like here. But like I said, I'm not out of slag Jutnikum, because I'm for one I'm for one actually really enjoys the game. I do think for a game that has been stuck in development hell and it's took all this time to come out, yeah there's wee points you go, I wish they could have done that better. Wee small things, but really I'm just happy the game came out and I'm so happy it came out the way I wanted it to come out. Just remember I'm playing the game back all the years ago. Also, the best thing about it, like I said, Duke Nukem's catchphrases. Obviously, when you kill one of the aliens, it always hits you a wee catchphrase just to let you know who's boss. Oh, looks like Lady Luck just gave you the finger. Also, the music, that's one of the most recognisable tracks in gaming history. Go on YouTube, everybody has made a copy of Duke Nukem's track. Megadeth even went as far as putting one of their albums. It is one of the most recognisable tracks you'll ever get to find. The boss fights in the game are just your typical boss fights, like in the old one, except you can only really use the Devastator, the RPG, and also pipe bombs. When it gets the wee red flashing light, as Duke, you always get to take a piss out of them. So what does the future hold for Duke? Obviously a lot of people didn't really like Duke Nukem Forever. It still got slagged because it was in development hell. But I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. Obviously this game is not to be taken serious. It is a piss take other games as well. But I'm happy 
Duke is finally back in my life that all the gaming heroes that enjoy playing the games and to have Duke finally back just made it even worthwhile for this game. Now, will it be another Duke Nukem game? Obviously Gearbox has bought, uh, bought out the franchise and they've thought about making another game. So here's hoping that they bring out obviously a better game than Duke Nukem Forever or even a better game than Duke Nukem 3D. So all we can do is wait and see what happens in the future. And like Duke said, hope we don't have to wait another fucking 12 years for the next one. <laughs>